Hey guys and welcome to another schematics update. This time we want to talk about Project Hospital. We got access to the beta from Oxymoron Games. Thanks a lot for that. And I'm Ed for TV and I have Blind and Billy with me. Hey guys. Hello, what's hey up? Yo. We had a little bit of time to play around. Could you please explain what's in the game currently or in the beta blind? Right, we have what they're calling their creator demo. Um, so it's sort of like a showcase of all of the game itself, but it doesn't have any of the structure that would make it into a more traditional finished product. So what we have is we have a set of tutorials, uh, some of which are unfinished tutorials, uh, just to kind of get us through the basics. And then we have three separate maps so one of them is completely empty one of them is a basic clinic and then the other one is a full-on hospital the hospital is quite overwhelming when you first hop into it they all give you uh, various things that you can tackle i think i spent the most time in the empty one and just kind of gawked at the hospital a little bit i have to admit i only played the tutorials and then i immediately got into the, basically the free sandbox mode so an empty map and go and um, do we want to talk about the tutorials at first? Because I think they're an interesting part of it. Because I started the tutorials and I was like, when I finished them, immediately the third and the fourth one will be rewritten. But when I finished all four tutorials, I was more lost than before. I think tutorials are expensive to do correctly and require a lot of development time. The game itself isn't that bad once you know all of the UI. So all it really needs is a UI tour. But also, you, I'm a person who uh, is quite experienced with this genre and could probably just fumble thumbs my way through the entire game without any My tutorials. opinions align with blind. I think too many tutorials like that would bog the game down. It would feel like, oh, I have to learn this much in order to start playing when really you could probably pick it up as you go. Uh, just doing a tour of the UI would be enough in a lot of ways or just some little bits of gameplay to just get the player used to clicking mm -hmm. around to an in-game resource where it kind of describes like, hey, what, what can I get out of an MRI, you know? After the tutorial, you had to decide if you want to go into an empty map or in two of the scenarios, basically, that we have. What do you think of the gameplay? Back to what I mentioned at the beginning, this isn't the final product. Right now, we just have the base game. And I think I'm just going to read out verbatim what I've got in this Google Doc here, which is it's a fantastic base but it needs direction. Right now there, especially if you start with the empty, if you start with the more full maps, you're immediately overwhelmed and you don't know what to do. If you start with the empty maps, it's really easy to get a small clinic up and running. It's really easy to get some money going. It's really easy to get your initial doctors hired. And then there's always the throw your hands up in the air moment and go, okay, what do I do from here? I think they, whatever they end up doing with the final game, be that uh, a list of scenarios, a list of maybe that go the uh, prison architect route and say, okay, you sell your hospital and buy a bigger hospital or buy a bigger plot of land to build a bigger hospital. Um, regardless of how they end up going about it, what the final game needs to do is have some way of pushing the player through the different levels of technology that you have in the game because right now it doesn't really do that it's the game is quite content to let you just build the base small clinic with four or five doctors and then just let the game yeah run. i pretty much agree it's a case where there's not enough push for further expansion you could even mm -hmm. kind of give up after a stat lab you know sure radiology kind of helps but you can still kind of guess with certain diagnoses, again, going back to the tennis elbow, golf elbow debacle, because it's practically the same same issue, but it's different <laughs> size, size of the arm. I, I, you know, just kind of pushing the player a little bit more to think a bit more creatively about how they manage and build their hospital. Kind of reflecting back on Roller Coaster Tycoon, like one of the best maps is like Dinky Park. Here you have an entirely tiny map. You have to get creative on how to actually meet your scenario goals yeah. and i think you know when i think of like dinky park i'm thinking like well in in this game you can make multiple stories of your hospital yet i don't really feel the compulsion to make like a second story or a third story uh when starting with a base clinic yeah. i think the reason for that is i just haven't run out of space yet yeah but talking about that let, let's move on a little bit and talk about um difficulty mm -hmm. uh, in the game because right now the game that we have is balanced to let you win yeah uh, at least early i haven't gotten far enough into a point where the game starts getting difficult uh, especially in the empty map what do you think of the 
of the difficulty curve right now. Um, and what would you like to see in the finished product versus what we have right now? Honestly, it's kind of hard to tell because when I started playing, I said to you blind uh, while you were streaming, okay, I'm having a look at a tutorial. And that was, I think, 11 at night and I went to bed at four in the morning. So uh, I played quite a bit on the first day and after the tutorials, I jumped into the empty map and I agree, it's very, very uh, easy to get money as soon as you have like two doctor's offices running because you're getting money from the cured patients and you're getting money a little bit later on from the insurance companies as, yeah. uh, as well. And that gets to be large sums really quickly too, like $20,000 yeah, right. for curing 15 patients plus every exactly. patient. Exactly, so you money. get like your normal daily business plus you get bonuses. And that's very easy made money, but I'm not sure if that's not... If that's not intended, like to keep keep your hospital uh, hospital going, I honestly I hadn't have a look at like the price tag on later tech, so maybe it's super expensive. For example, MRI is super expensive uh, in real life. I have no clue if it's as expensive or similarly expensive in a game so maybe it makes sense you can blow through money pretty quickly if you go really really crazy on radiology stuff if you just decided to get like the cat scan the mri and like all the laboratories all at once then yeah you're gonna probably go into the red but then there's not really much of a consequence for going into the red you just wait until you get the money yeah. back also there's not really a punishment you can also go into the red pretty quickly if you just rebuild floors repeatedly because every time you paint a floor a different color it costs you money yeah. yeah i did that and also there's not really a punishment for accepting uninsured vic or victims <laughs> <laughs> uninsured patients <laughs> hey you know we, we run our hospitals differently okay but no there's not a punishment for accepting uninsured patients um because you just after 10 patients you get like ten thousand yeah. dollars 20 patients twenty thousand dollars it scales too yeah. well i don't know how it really works on the bureaucratic side at least in the u.s or in any part of the world but yeah, in the U.S., I'm pretty sure you do not get that much money for uninsured mm -hmm. patients. Whatever they end up doing with the final product, I hope that they rebalance it. And I and they haven't been too clear on how balanced this current version is, um, how close to the final product it is. So I think we need to make that very clear. Yeah, definitely. I really, really hope that this is just our sandbox mm -hmm. mode, kind of, maybe like a free play mode even is what we're playing, um, because it is very easy right now to just balloon in size i don't want to mm. solve a management game here it's so close to real life with uh, the diseases your patients have and everything so i i want it yeah i want it to be hard i don't know if you guys agree i'm right there with you Adfo. i i want this to be a very in-depth yeah. complex game and i i hope that they get there with the balancing and the difficulty mm -hmm. and speaking of depth and complexity um, let's talk about building for a second. So the building in this game is, in my opinion, well done. It's deceptively simple. It's yeah. deceptively simple, but it's also like addicting to me. Oh, yeah. Because I, yes. I love I love building stuff in video games. I love designing layouts for buildings. When I was younger, I used to love building or drawing fire escape routes for big buildings in my area. Like I drew a freaking fire escape from my local pool when I was like 11. I, I love designing layouts for buildings. And so this game lets you, in as Billy said, in a deceptively simple system, set up all of the rooms and then make them look incredibly complicated, yes. even if yeah. they're not. Um, and that, I think, is kind of genius because it's extremely satisfying to lay out a bunch of doctor's offices and fill them up with equipment. And you can make each one look different and unique while at the same time all having the same equipment in them or having varying different types of diagnostic mm -hmm. equipment. And it's super satisfying. 100% yes. agree, yeah. I agree, but there, I mean, it's probably due to beta, but there's some clunkiness involved too in terms of item placement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, C Certain machines don't, you know, they highlight yellow if they can't be accessed by anybody but it's like well i can't really put a certain 
type of diagnostic machine right by the exam table because there's just not really a way to get that close or or in some cases, I don't know what's really wrong. That to me, yeah, I, I think there there is some issue with communication there, like explaining what can go where. But once you kind of figure out how each mm -hmm. item works, I think it almost makes the game into like kind of the beauty of what I talk about with Roller Coaster Tycoon half the time is it's its own puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. The layout of every single room is a little puzzle that you've designed for yourself, depending on how you laid out the size and shape setup of your room and where you put all the other objects. It's a it's a little organizational puzzle, and I I really like that. That's gameplay in and of a, in and of itself. Like I spent easily. Uh, my first hour of this game just like laying out three or four rooms like i it's it's fun yeah and it's especially like you know right before we started recording i was doing a little test to see how i can make a tiny clinic that isn't claustrophobic mm -hmm. you know like a nice efficient layout i think i managed to do that pretty well you kind of noticed i noticed some of the problems that i had like oh i wish i could rotate doors because it seems really awkward that the door doesn't open towards the wall but opens like in the middle and it, it blocks more space or might even create unpassable pa uh, passageways. Mm -hmm. You know, why does the info TV have to be like accessed? You know, when why can it just be above a chair and not glow yellow? Because it, people just are going to look at it. They're not really going to walk up to it and be like, "Oh, it's not my number," and then walk back <laughs> to their chair. You know, things. It's it's yeah. small little nitpicks, of course, but there's a lot that, you, as you were saying, there's a lot you can do with the building system. It's, you know, I kind of was like, oh, this isn't really going to be that much at for, you know, from a first glance. And then as I was, you know, putting more and more into my rooms, it's like, wow, this was I'm 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 carrying a little too much. I need to kind of move on a little bit. Everything feels cluttered now. Help. And like at first I was kind of turned off by the fact that you can't rotate the camera because yeah. you know, I, I get it. I get why it's theme hospital yeah. didn't allow you to do the same thing either. I don't think you need to, though. You don't really need to, though. In some cases, it helps because um you don't really some objects obscure mm -hmm. other objects like if it's on the wall or if there's uh like you know posters mirrors etc you might not be able to see an object yeah. on the other side of the wall mm -hmm. and then you don't really know if something is in the room until you start deleting things and replacing them of course that costs money i personally didn't have any problems with that but i think that also might be because i think an isometric because of how many of these games i play well, yeah, I mean, I didn't really have that many problems with it, but I did encounter some issues. It would certainly be a nice quality of life feature. At the very least, if you hide the walls, you hide all objects on the walls, too. As we said, currently there are three maps in the game. One basically sandbox, and then there are two scenarios. I didn't play, I opened the map and I said, nope, I want to build my own hospital. Uh, but Billy and Blind, you played a little bit around, right? So I, I poked around the hospital map mm -hmm. just a little bit, um, and it does have several options for little scenario events that you can trigger. The, this, the clinic map is not really much more than the a slightly more advanced version of the the free creation sandbox where the land is empty. Okay. Uh, most of the objectives in the game are mainly just hitting the insurance goals, do this to get an X amount of money or to unlock a new type of equipment or room type and that's all fine but like when you got into the meat of it into the uh the bigger hospital yeah. you could activate these uh, two one of two or even both if you really wanted to challenge events one was a crash event where three injured uh patients would come in via ambulance and you would have to treat them uh, most would need operations and the second one is pandemic where there was just a mass disease unfortunately it didn't seem like the disease was consistent one person had like was almost diagnosed with like a tapeworm the other person was diagnosed with like irritable bowel sy syndrome they're kind of similar i guess but i think the main thing when we we're talking about difficulty before is that money management probably is something that isn't going to be the hard thing about the game uh, just because when you think about money management in a hospital there are so many different things to consider and in a lot of cases it's handled by people completely far away in terms of insurance offices yeah. and corporate a number of countries is handled by government mm -hmm. you, you can't really control those things without really bogging the game down to add too much complexity to the point where the point of the, the game is lost. I think the difficulty is going to come in terms of handling either events or certain uh, waves of patients coming in, mm -hmm. where the main challenge of those events was that, oh, I didn't have enough rooms or equipment or doctors to handle this influx of new patients that needed critical care. I think going forward, that's probably what you're going to be looking at in terms of difficulty is just, yeah, do you have doctors that are well-trained that can diagnose properly? Do you have enough ORs? Do you have enough... Uh, you know, hospital beds. 
unfortunately, it seems like if you don't have enough, it's like, uh, uh, oh, well, try again. You know, like there's not really a way to recover necessarily or a way to really detect. Mm. And I think when you start off, you can't really tell if you have certain equipment because sometimes you, the equipment is just too tiny or you can't really see it because it's obscured by something or the readability is a little off in terms of a room. So you don't really know if you're actually equipped when you jump into something. Mm -hmm. That could also apply where if you put down the game for a while and picked it back up, you might not remember what you put in your hospital yeah. the last time you played. Uh. And I think readability could be improved or at least to have another like heat map to tell you like, hey, am I missing something or heat maps? A good idea. Basically just a heat map saying like, do I have this equipment? If I don't, then OK, I gotcha. probably need it. But I guess that kind of goes into the idea of playing the doctor. Mm. Sometimes gets what you get to do optionally, but sometimes you have to do it because the AI can't make up their mind. So one of the features of, of Project Hospital is when a uh, patient comes in, you have a button that you can click on, which allows you to take manual control over the, diagno the diagnosis. So when the patient goes into the doctor's office, you can tell the doctor what to do to get an optimized route through diagnosing, figuring out what their symptoms are, giving them a prescription or prescribing rest or whatever, and then telling them to yeah. go home. The interesting thing about this is you can actually diagnose incorrectly. Mm -hmm. And you can do this intentionally as well, which I was maybe doing. It's lupus. It's it's always lupus. It, it'll, it gives you a lot of options and a lot of freedom in that mode itself. Always the anal examinations. Um, <laughs> so it, it, gives you, <laughs> it gives you the... Uh, the freedom to diagnose these patients based on their symptoms. Uh, obviously, there there is going to be a way every time to, if you read all the tooltips and look into what you're doing, you, you can get correct yeah. diagnosis if you have the correct equipment for your doctors to use. Um, and I, I think that this system, as, as a highlight, especially in early game, I think is really important because if you didn't have this system in early game when you just have a small clinic, the game would pretty much play itself admittedly this the genre this genre kind of does that mm -hmm. always there's always a point with sim city right where you sit back and you just kind of watch your city yeah. run well in this it lets you literally take manual control and power through patients faster than the mm -hmm. ai would which i think is a really neat mechanic and also as my chat brought up the other day is kind of educational because i was sitting here and learning about infections and diseases that i'd never heard of as well as potential cures and fixes for them it's kind of fascinating actually it's like oh these are their symptoms and this is what they've been diagnosed with and this is how you fix yeah. it i think i've been tricked into playing an educational game yeah i had the slight feeling as well which i honestly i i really really like yeah but i really like that you can give the ai the control because at a certain point you just yeah. can't uh, micromanagement everything uh so just lead the ai run like the diag uh, diagnosis and after that you can take over or a couple of cases where it's an unclear diagnosis the ai um ask mm -hmm. for your attention basically yeah. and you need to decide yeah and a cool thing about that moment is that you get those weird like it's a 51 49 percent split between two and then you can look further on the patient card like okay what are possible examinations that i can do and you might notice that some of them are blacked out because you don't have certain equipment like mm -hmm. hey if you had an mri you could do a test oh but i don't have that how do i get that and then you kind of get the idea of progression We're like oh well i can make my job easier yep. if i then invest in radiology little things like that where you kind of just gently guide the player without just explicitly telling them what to do. Mm -hmm. I, I'm all for that. So we, yeah. we've talked kind of at length now about Project Hospital, and obviously we've got a lot to say because there's a lot going on here. What are our current thoughts on the game? Like just straight up impressions. What do you think of what we've played so far? And kind of where do you see this game I going? I think it's the groundwork is there. Mm -hmm. um, all the elements needed to make a really interesting, fantastic game that's also educational as it's just being grounded in real life. I think that there's some issues with readability. I think that's probably my biggest issue where you just you look at something and you don't really know what you're looking at. If you just kind of dart in a certain way, whether you have reloaded a map after a couple of days of not playing, whether you jumped into a scenario that's already further along, you know, having a little bit more guidance in that way not necessarily like heavy-handed tutorials but just hey uh what do i have in my hospital right now um you know the ui is a little cluttered sometimes also like hey i forgot what this thing does can i pull up a resource and find out what it does mm -hmm. i think those would probably be the 
best steps to go uh, the best steps to take going forward and uh but other than that like the events are kind of creative i think they they could be a little bit more themed or a little bit more cohesive because again you have different diagnoses for a case where it's a pandemic of one disease but everybody has different ones i think that's really about it for me i'm looking forward to see where this goes i agree on most points i'd like to see more readability a little bit more but in general like I'm just focusing on gameplay here. I really, really like the base and I'm very curious what the final product will be. What you said earlier, Blind, I, I'm not sure if you said it in a recording or before we started the recording, but you said like you had the choice, the player choice, because the doctor couldn't diagnose if it's just a common cold or the patient had a hepatitis B. And that's an interesting yeah. part. What Billy said, that's educational. And maybe it's, you can sit uh, at home, you know, and think you have a cold, but in, in reality, you have hepatitis C. It's both an interesting moral choice and a, like an interesting educational thought. You ha only have one health, you know, and you tend to kind of don't give it that much attention. And I think that choices like that uh, can help focus on your health a little bit more because it might seem like just a common cold now but it could be worse or maybe even the other way around so um yeah it's interesting really interesting for your thoughts for the, your thoughts on a video game this is taking an interesting yeah. turn <laughs> um i'm just gonna quickly say that I, I completely agree with what Billy has to say. I do think the readability is a bit of an issue, but also I think with games like this, once you've played it a bit, your brain kind of just understands it. When we want to talk about readability, let's talk about Dwarf Fortress or RimWorld. <laughs> yeah. um, games like that just make no sense, but I look at anything in RimWorld and I'm like, okay, I know that, 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 and that's fine. Mm -hmm. Once you've played it a bit, I think it'll probably all fall into place in your brain. As far as the game itself, I think it's a fantastic base and I can't wait to see them build on it. This is also noting the earliest copy we've ever gotten for a game ever. Mm -hmm. Like, this, the game's coming out October 30th. So yeah. Thank you to the Oxymoron for getting us codes this early. I'm very curious to see what this game ends up being. Do we see potential for, let's say, DLCs or free updates? Like, what could they add to the game? Like, specifically, I think... Uh, games like this are always inherently modular, right? You can always bolt stuff to the outside of it and expand upon it. So first off, to anybody watching this video, I just want to say, if you have any ideas for things that you'd like to see in a game like this, what would it be? In my case, I think Disasters Pack would be fantastic. Not necessarily Disasters in the hospital, but like natural disasters. Like say, oh, a hurricane and then next city over is happening, and so you're going to have a ton of waterlogged patients and people with problems with their feet because they've been standing in two mm -hmm. feet of water for... Or you would have to equip your hospital with helipads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. From the most part, we see a very general idea of medicine, but medicine is very, you know, branches off into very specific fields. Yeah. I think probably the, the most, uh, the thing I would like to see is a focus on like, uh, an expansion focus on psychiatric medicine. Because I think, A, that's probably where the most education is probably needed in today's world. Mm -hmm. And B, I think there's a lot that you can explore in terms of both the difficulty of diagnosing patients and also the difficulty of staffing a psychiatric ward effectively. Yeah. You know, you have differences between adult care and adolescent care. And also, that's another thing. You can do pediatric medicine. You know, there's no kids in the uh, game just mm -hmm. yet. This game pretty much oozes with potential it's, and especially because it is grounded in reality it's it's not a case where you know diseases are mostly fictional or everything's kind of rooted in a fantasy or in a specific storyline you know you don't have to kind of you can just look at the real world and say oh we can adapt that to our game and there's 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 a lot in the real world first of all thanks blind and billy for playing the game and uh, thanks for joining thanks again to oxymoron games for providing us with keys and uh, for the beater and thanks to you guys out there watching this video as blind said earlier if you have any idea what they could add to the game or 
just your general thoughts about the game. Let us know in the comment section. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you really liked the video, you may want to consider heading over to Coffee to buy Blind a coffee because he edits way too much lately because I'm back in school. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for listening in. See you next time. Bye. Peace. So long and stay healthy.